Auditors are in the spotlight at the moment following the collapse of Carillion and other accounting scandals. While the industry watchdog, the Financial Reporting Council, is under fire as well for its record in supervising them. Well, the UK's number five player, Grant Thornton, has said it will no longer compete with the so-called Big Four, that's Deloitte, EY, KPMG and PwC, for audit contracts from the UK's largest 350 companies. So is the audit marketplace in this country functioning properly and do we need more competition and even regulation? Well, joining me now is Grant Thornton. CEO Sasha Romanovich. Sasha, really appreciate you joining me. Hi. Why did you take this decision? Um, well, it was a really a strategic decision for us. Um, you know, we know that we have scale and capability to look at some of the most complex work in the UK. We've done the ring fencing assurance on Barclays. Um, we're market leader in the public sector. And yet, in this FTSE 350 marketplace, despite the rotation rules that came in in 2016 and us tendering for many opportunities, we've only won two in that period. And we just decided that actually it was better focusing our time and resources on advisory work in that marketplace where we could actually make a difference. So that's how you replace any lost revenue? Yeah, I mean, to, to, be, to be fair, it's not about losing revenue. You know, we will continue to serve the clients that we already act for in that marketplace. It's much more about saying, look, it's much better to direct the resources at serving the clients and winning clients where they want to work with us rather than keeping beating the door where they don't. This is pretty terrible in terms of what it says about the UK audit market and competitiveness. I mean, here you are, one of the sort of challenger brands, and you're basically saying, we can't compete with the big, big guys. I think the interesting thing is in terms of competition, you know, for the FTSE 350, the large four firms have over 98% market share. And I think it's time for the Competition Commission to actually have another look at that wow. and see how, the, how can they change things. I mean, the, also the uh, Financial Reporting Council told the Financial Times the other day he almost favoured breaking the, the big four up. I mean, do you go along with that? Well, I think that's actually conflating issues. You know, that's on a very different issue, which is around conflict of interest. How do you ensure you're not marking your own homework? And so I, I personally don't think that's a solution to the issue that we're talking about. And I also think it's important that, particularly where the UK is in the global economy, that we widen this debate to actually talk about, you know, this isn't just about competition. This is about what is the role of audit and assurance in ensuring trust and integrity in markets for us to be a really viable global centre. Well, clearly that trust has been eroded by scandals like the uh, collapse of Carillion, hasn't it? Mm. Although I think, you know, I, th I think again, I think it's important to say, you know, when you look around the world, there will always be corporate failings and looking specifically at what is the role of assurance. We currently have an assurance, an audit, statutory audit product that is designed to do to not do the two things that actually the market continue to ask for, which is can you detect fraud and can you guarantee me that this business will continue? Those are things that specifically a statutory audit does not do as it stands. So the whole system's uh, dysfunctional, it's not just a lack of competition. Yeah, so, I, so I, th I think you have got these three different issues, which is what is what do we really need going forward into the future to actually give trust and integrity beyond just what shareholders are looking for, but wider stakeholders. You've got how do you make sure you haven't got conflicts of interest and you've got competition. We mustn't conflate the three. So what are your ideas on those? So I think, the, I think the key thing is I think that, you know, doing a review of competition is important, but I think the really critical one is let's step back. Let's take the opportunity to look at how the UK could be world leading in creating an assurance framework that is fit for the future. And there's a lot of opportunity there to make a difference. I mean, as you say, you, me you mentioned uh, the rotation rules a while ago. I mean, at the moment, big companies, they have to put out their audit contract for tender every 10 years and then yeah. rotate them every 20 years. Is that too short a, a time frame, do you think? Or sorry, rather too long? Um, not necessarily. I mean, you know, rotation was really trying to actually deal with two, se two separate things. One was trying to make sure that people weren't getting too familiar um, so falling into the marking your own homework and the other to open up competition but I think that on its own as a measure is never going to really make a difference. And what about the FRC itself? I mean mm -hmm. obviously the politicians are gunning for it now. I mean, it, is it fit for purpose? I mean, there's a re there are real questions about regulatory capture and the, the number of ex-Big Four partners who are on its board and big, big shots at the FRC. 
Yeah, I mean, again, you know, I think that, you know, all of us need to look at that. Are we marking our own, own homework, including the FRC? But again, I think it's looking at what is, what, what is a fit for purpose regulator? How do they focus on the areas of biggest risk? And, you know, as their scope of span of controls extended, you know, there has to be a question in terms of what is assurance for? How do we stratify the market so we're focusing on where it will make the biggest difference? And also reinventing how that works in a digital world. And so I think, again, there's the opportunity to re-look really at it and really think about how we can transform to be fit for the future. All right, Sasha Romanovich, we've got to leave it there, I'm afraid. Great to see you. Thank, Thank you. you.